scoot a little bit closer. <laughs> wow, scoot. Oh my God! Scoot closer. Okay. Okay, ready. Wow. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? Okay. Welcome to the podcast today. I decided to have my mom on and talk to you guys a little bit about a topic idea that y'all gave me on my last vlog. Um, so for those of y'all that don't know, this is my mom. She's a cool grandma. She's not a regular grandma. Um, she's a, a nurse like me and, uh, very involved with Kato's life. Her and my dad both are. Um, it almost kind of seems like we co-parent sometimes because he just spends a lot of time with them. He grew up around them, like heavily involved. So yeah. I can't, how come wow. I can't see me? I can't. Because I'm trying to make, God. <laughs> okay, so I got a, I got a topic from, I actually didn't mean to, but I blurred out the name, um, but it was on, it was a comment on my last podcast and it said a topic, a good topic would be how to handle a situation where other people say rude things to you or about you or the kids when basically you're out in public and they're being loud or being distracting, um, like not necessarily hurting anyone, but just being kind of loud and distracting. And I thought that might be, you know, a, I mean, I know it hasn't been a typical year with COVID and everything, but we still go out and do a lot of things. So I thought it would be a good topic. Um, and I know obviously you guys take Kiddo out a lot and yeah. sometimes, well, a lot of times without me because they help babysit while I work. So sometimes I'm not there. I'm sure they have plenty of stories <laughs> of Kiddo moments going out, but <sighs> I don't know. I think, um, I think the question was kind of just like, how do you navigate those types of like awkward situations? Where... Well, I think you have to be your expectations have to be kind of realistic like we take him to places where it's appropriate I think yeah like we're not going to take him to um a white you know, tablecloth restaurant yeah. or something like that yeah. yeah but I think also that's kind of the same for like a neurotypical kid like most kids don't want to go to like a super fancy restaurant or like a you know uh black tie event I mean well, that's true, but I mean, we do try to go to those that are a little bit more, um, well, things that he likes. Yeah. Like Cracker Barrel. <laughs> yeah. And, and places like Cracker Barrel is his favorite restaurant that are already loud, loud. to begin with. Very loud. Yes. Yeah. So he kind of blends in. Um, yeah. And I mean, we try to go to places that he likes. Um, like I said, this has other kids there appropriate. <laughs> And the time of day, we don't do, you know, Friday nights or Saturday night late where people might be out trying to have a quiet date or yeah, something like that. Yeah, romantic, candlelit yeah, dinner. Yeah, like. Same thing with going places. We tend to kind of go places that are more interesting to Kadel. Um, you yeah, know, because you know. then that's going to encourage, you know, good behavior and also familiarity because he's been a Cracker right. Barrel. Routine. Uh, yeah, routine because he knows what to expect. Right. Um, you know, but at the same time, like, and not like with any kid, you're not going to like take them on a long shopping spree where you're trying on mm -hmm. clothes and they're bored and there's nothing for them to do. Cause yeah, we just, you know, you don't that's going to irritate any kid. Right. You do that when he's in school or something. Yeah. 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 But I think, you know, at the same time, like we're not going to hold back from kid L trying new experiences and going to like new different places just because of his autism. We kind of just roll with the waves and <laughs> what's the saying? Roll with the punches. Yeah. Like, you know, like always be prepared. I always have a plan B. So if we're like going somewhere new or different, um, for whatever reason, whether it be like we're joining another family, um, on a, on an invitation type of situation, yeah. we're going to go, we're going to try it. And not like you said with expectations um right. I think that's what you said like if we have to leave early we have to leave early if right. 
you know, he's having a moment. Like, I always know, like, where my exits are, where my bathroom is, so that right. I can provide him, like, right. some... Because places don't really have quiet rooms. Like, that's not really a thing mm -hmm. at every common place, so... Um, and like you've said before, leave on a high note. Oh, my gosh. He's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> he knows we're in here. Yeah, he knows we're in here, and it's driving him crazy because he wants to... <laughs> He wants to come photobomb the yeah. <laughs> podcast, which he could, but um, then he would just want us to get up and play with them. <laughs> right. Um, or go somewhere or do something. Yeah, get in the car and go somewhere. But um, yeah. But I think, yeah, leaving, well, I mean, going somewhere, like if he's overly tired or overly hungry or mm -hmm. just, you know, not feeling well or something, not having a good day, it's, you pick where you go or you don't go. Yeah. And then... Um, like, like you said, leave on a high note before kind of, he gets too tired or yeah. hits a wall or too bored. Yeah. So it's kind of being intuitive. And proactive too, I right, think. Right. Before and before, during and after wherever, you know, you're trying to go or whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, yeah. And then if it hits the ceiling fan, it hits the ceiling fan and you kind of cross that bridge when you get to it. But I think... I think Kittle's done so good not to like jinx anything, but the older he gets, the better he gets about those like unexpected outbursts. And like we've had, mm -hmm. we've had a lot of those in, in our time with Kittle, but, um, I don't know. He's just been doing really good lately and on a high note and there's nothing you can do when, when it, when outbursts happen or meltdowns happen. I mean, there's literally nothing you can do, but just right. Leave. I think he's, getting older and more mature mm -hmm. so he's kind of seems like he's almost outgrowing that a little bit um and where like if you yeah. he does get a little loud or you can tell him quiet voice and he he kind of yeah reins it back in it might only last for like a minute and then he's but right he's back at least loud aware, again yeah. but he is more aware of yes. like the receptive communication of like understanding what you're asking right. him and like processing that and trying to right you know comply with being quiet or whatever you're asking him to do but um yeah i mean i i think you know don't let autism stop you from like right going and doing things but you know you and just, if like we're you know walking through walmart and he's a little stimmy or whatever oh well who cares? I mean, people yeah. might look or something but i've never had anybody say anything I, I, I have, but like not, not like it bothers me just because like I know Kidel hears and like understands everything. So it doesn't right. bother me for me. It bothers me for him, but you know, it's not often. I mean, people stare just because like he'll just make a really loud stare. Yeah. It stuff. startles. <laughs> it startles them. Like they'll be like, what was that? And if, but, if you're not used to that, that is awkward. Like, I'm so used to it that yeah. I can be in Walmart and hear a kid across the store and think, oh, that sounds like Kidel. Yeah. You know, I bet I, there's an autistic child in here somewhere. You yeah. know, I'm uber um, in tune to those kind of things. Um, but other people who have no exposure to... Um, children like Kate L then yeah. it is very alarming yeah. or takes you by surprise. And I don't, and usually when people get startled, it's typically followed with like a smile once they kind of realize yeah. where that noise came from or like what's going on. Yeah. So I don't think people typically mean it like in a bad way or mm -hmm. like they're trying to be, you know, rude or anything. It's just kind of more of a startle, but Curio yeah. And curiosity. Yeah. I know I was a little, concern like um the last time we flew maybe he would be and, and that's another thing like we're gonna fly during daytime hours you know we wouldn't fly like late like a red eye yeah. and expect kiddo not to keep the whole plane awake you know oh or, yeah but that's like with any kid, you know, I feel yeah, like... I don't know. A lot of people travel with kids at night thinking that they'll sleep. Oh, true. But, oh, yeah, kiddo you know, <laughs> we would fly during the daytime hours where if he's a little louder, then 
that's not a big deal. But the last time we did it, he did really well. Like I, yeah. Because me and Dad ended up sitting in the front of the plane, and you were in the back, and yeah, I didn't hear him at all. Yeah, yeah. It was like he kind of enjoyed it, if anything. But yeah. that's also again just I think maturity and him kind of understanding like his environment and like the, the world around him. Yeah, yeah. He knew that we were in a you know a small area and that you couldn't run and be loud there the expectation was to sit in the seat with your seatbelt on and he he did well yeah mm-hmm. but that's also that's nowadays kdl right you know and i talk right. about this all the time like the difference between kdl before meds and the difference after meds and yeah. we've definitely had a lot of like uncomfortable moments um there like we had a long stretch of like just behaviors and like explosive behaviors and unpredictable behaviors and things like that but again you know I never like let that hold us back from like at least trying Trying. to do stuff or giving them the benefit of the doubt you know and like I can think of one really uncomfortable moment at Disney World um when (laughs) it was like super hot super crowded because it's Disney and it's always crowded this was before COVID yeah, yeah, and before he was on yeah. meds, because he's only been on meds for God, not even two years, like less than two years, I think, but um, or maybe right at, but we were, it was like just really hot and crowded, and I could tell he was getting amped up because the, it wasn't even a line, it was like a herd of people, like a sea of people, and we were all trying to like get in through security and stuff <laughs> like that. Do, did I tell you this right? Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. and he was pissed because there was like a it's hot and sweaty, it was hot and, and, sweaty and, and like loud. Yeah, Kendall doesn't like to hold still. He's constantly moving and pacing, and he doesn't like. I think too, it was a huge sensory thing because there were so many people, people and yeah. it was just loud and stuff. And he was mad, and he just like reached up. I could see he was getting amped up, but I didn't expect him to do this. And he like pulled this girl's ponytail that was in front of him and she was probably about his age maybe a little bit younger and I didn't know what to do like I just froze and the and the she was with her grandma and her grandma completely flipped out on oh really me. like she did flipped. she realize he was autistic or special needs I don't think she even stopped to think about it yeah. it was like she and and the thing is is like it wasn't like he like pulled it her hair out like just it wasn't it like jerk. he like pulled it out or yeah it was like he just like tugged her hair like that <laughs> not um, like that's it, not funny but it's it i know i know it's not funny and like obviously but it happened it, before you could react it happened i didn't expect that um right. i didn't i kind of yeah <clears throat> and um you know obviously kiddo was in the wrong because he put his hands on her and you know i can't fault the grandma for being upset about this situation but the little girl kind of like stopped for a second and I think it scared her more than anything like I don't think it really hurt her but it scared her and she started crying like 15 seconds after he did it and the grandma just completely wigged out what did you say to her I just said I'm sorry he's autistic I apologize like I didn't know what else to say there was like nothing else I could have said oh she just carried on Still? Carried on, carried on. Oh, like wow. the vein in her forehead was about to pop wow. out. Like she was, yeah. Good thing I wasn't she there. She had her Karen <laughs> eyes, her her crazy eyes on me. But yeah, she was like, she's crying, blah blah blah. And then there was a nice lady behind me that could tell that kiddo was autistic, and she was really sweet. She was like. Well, do you want me to help you like navigate like because she could see that there was like a little opening between the sea of people and the wall and she was like do you want me to help you like get through and I was like wow that's really sweet because yeah. Cadell was having a little moment too but and that could have been I mean you know the first grandma she may not have and she may not have but the thing with her is like another thing is exposure I, I, I know, but you have to give people the benefit of the doubt. I know. Like I know. the lady that tried to help you, maybe she had. Has, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. For or you know, for her to be that 
in tune to you and what you were going through and the other lady to be so oblivious maybe she just had never yeah. and it was like she was already triggered so yeah. me telling her he has autism he you know yeah. was having some a sensory moment like she was already triggered so she wasn't hearing anything that i said and she just and even if she did she may not have understood it yeah yeah and that's the whole purpose of you doing these videos is to be one voice to help spread yeah. awareness and education and and hopefully um the people that watch you can continue to do that also yeah and to play devil's advocate like if kato got hit by another kid or if kato you know, got hit by like an, an older autistic kid that was bigger and stronger than him. And like he sure. was, I would be super mad. Like I would be, sure, that's human nature. I would be upset, but also I would assess the situation. Like kiddos really not hurt, freaked out. Yeah. Scared. Yeah. Like, you know, really scarred. No. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. And you know, I would kind of, I think, I don't know how I would react is kind of, I would like, give Kato the attention and like the affirmation that he needs to let him know like you're okay like it's okay right and then I would probably like the lady I don't even think that the lady um looked at her kid before she just like went ballistic on me like she, it was just I don't know kind of like right. an if she was offended thing and it might have just been a knee-jerk reaction too it was it was but I yeah, don't I don't think I've really encountered anybody that's, I mean, not that I can recall. Um, Let me make sure my battery's on dead. Okay. And Kadel, um, also, you said that was probably like two years ago and before medications. Yeah. And I can, I, I know it's probably a lot of it is medication, but I think a lot of it's, he's just more mature cognitively. Mm -hmm. He understands more. He's had, I think, two more years of ABA therapy he's had. Yeah. And you do take him a lot of places and you do expose him to a lot of different settings. Yeah. So that, I think, helps him rather than like hide at home. You get him out and y'all go places and yeah. you do things. And Like, could you know. imagine if like we didn't go out and do things like how huge of like a sensory shock? Yeah. Well, Disney is like sensory overload for anybody, but. You know, right. just something like going to Walmart or going to a restaurant, like that would be like a huge sensory overload if, if it was like his first time and he didn't right. have years of like building up. Right. You know. And he used to like run off. Like if you like, uh, he'd try to run. Like if you oh, went to yeah. the mall, yeah, you had to always hold his hand yeah. or the store, you'd always had to hold his hand. And now you don't have to. He can, he'll walk beside you. He'll come back if you tell him to. And I know before, you know, years, year and a half ago, me and dad would, I'd always, I wouldn't take him anywhere by myself because he was so big. Yeah. And he could run so darn fast that, I, you know, I was afraid maybe he could get away from me. Like even going to the park or something. But, yeah. but he's good now. Like I don't have any problem with that because I know he, he listens. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll stay with you, you know. So I think cognitively there's whether it's maturity or meds or therapy or all of the above it you know mm -hmm. let me do youtube grandma see let me do youtube grandma oh and and mommy kind of like in a minute what do you want he just wants to know why you're locked in here we're just doing video lovey yep. can i have a kiss mm -hmm. oh what a sweet boy that's sure. it handsome here okay see mommy Grandma, do you too? You can leave them, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Come here. Leave them, If not, call me. Hi. 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 Hi, we're here. Everybody's He's here. He's a cute boy. <laughs> we're talking about you. He's so handsome. But, um, anyways, what, a thing too that I think, to go back to like playing devil's advocate is if, is like to put myself in the shoe of, you know, neurotypical kids' parents and... Fuck. I mean, like, what? Fur? Yeah, you can have my phone. Fur? Big guy? Huh? You want big guy's phone? Go big find him. <laughs> Go find him. He's what? photo bombing. Aw, what a sweet boy. I know that is the airplane. I know. I know. Airplane. I know it is. Your cut is so cute. Airplane. Airplane? You love the airplane. He loves an airplane. airplane. That's your favorite airplane. thing. Airplane. We're not going on the airplane. If that's what you're Airplane. Nope. 
Dress not today. You have school tomorrow. Then go to school, yeah. Mama, you have school tomorrow. You can't go on the airplane tonight. And put in it. Yes. Kiddo, I need to win the lottery so I can buy you an airplane. Ooh. Or just buy lots of tickets and we can go on airplane <laughs> rides all of the time. All right, you want me to take him? At least once no. a month. I don't. Okay. It's okay. Airplane. Just listen okay. out. Okay. But anyways, going, going back, I, I want to like, like, what do you think would be like an appropriate way to like respond when, you know, cause yes, kiddo's doing much better now, but for parents who's like, kids are still struggling with public outings or like unpredictable, aggressive behaviors, like how, like, what do you think is the best way to like approach that or handle that or, well, maybe or prevent make, you I mean, still gotta get out you still gotta yeah your kid your child still has to be out in in the world yeah um, and i would say just you know start out with short trips and talk to them ahead of time like yeah you talk to kate i'll tell them where you go and what you're gonna do and that helps What's with this anxiety you know yeah. um and one thing you have done before is like show them pictures oh yeah like hot you know, hot towel. we're going to target and hot shows towel. him a picture of the logo and he he knew that you know um now he knows the words really well but prior to him really understanding that she would show him pictures and um First we're gonna go to Target, and then we're gonna go to Chick Fil A, and he he understood that, and I think that worked him. Yeah, but kind of prepare he could visit, you know, outings short, and tell him you know what the expectations are, and while you're out, and the child may be oh my um, having some struggles, you know, you talk to them just like you would a neurotypical child. And if people see your, you know, working with your child to, um, to say, like, correct a bad behavior, but right. you know, they're not gonna. I think you're not just sitting people, there letting your child like right, run around having, and, and do whatever. Because one of the, I think the point that I was trying to make is like I always preach about like inclusion and how. You know, I want kids to, to make friends and to mix and mingle with like all different types of kids. But I can also understand the other parents' like fear or hesitation because they don't know Kidale, they don't know what to expect, and they don't want to put their kid in like a dangerous situation. So I, I guess that's a different topic, mm -hmm. but kind of you know, as far as like public outings, mm -hmm. just like going to the park or going to you know a, mm -hmm. the playground at the mall or whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, what was I gonna say? Um, Hata! Gosh. Hi. <laughs> A little distraction there, Dale. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I can understand the hesitation from other parents um, because there is an unpredictability factor, but like you said, I think that's a good point that, you know, you can kind of tell from, from, the parents of autistic children, if they're, you know, hands on, if they're staying Gaging. close by, if they're, you know, being like interactive, or then that it, training mode, you know, you yeah. can tell that they're. I think it's okay to let your guard situation. down yeah. and allow the kids to be kids and to play. And you know, like if if something did happen, because that is a part of autism, is you know a. Um, delay in social interactions or like a deficit in social interactions um you know if something were to happen like for example Kidale has this thing where he doesn't want your hair on your shoulders like he's kind of getting past that but it was like going strong for a while there and he would like constantly want your hair off your shoulders yeah, he'll flip it back for and, you and he'll just say hair and, and he wants you to get it, I don't know, it's like a little thing of his. And he went up to a girl at gymnastics and she had like a ponytail like this and he just brushed her ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> and it it caught the little girl off, off guard, but she was like so understanding when I told her like, sorry, he's autistic. She was like, she just giggled and she was really like yeah. sweet about it. But I think kids are probably a little more chill than um, the parents. Yeah. Parents tend to be more protective. Yeah. You know, um, just like when you were in kindergarten and that little girl in your class was autistic and um, we didn't even, we didn't. Hotel. I want to go to the hotel, bunny. Hotel. Caitlin was so, um, 
just gravitated to this little girl. And I don't think she spoke, did she? Was she nonverbal? No, she was nonverbal. Yeah, and um, we knew that there was some kind of special needs there, but I don't even think we knew what autism was back yeah. then. Like, we had not it wasn't been exposed as, to it. as widely talked about. You were like about. five. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember it either, but I remember... You know, we definitely knew she was special yeah. needs and everything. And Caitlin was just like a little protective of her. She, <laughs> I don't her remember hands. why. Like I don't remember you, if it was because you knew she was different and you had empathy. I believe towards her. Yeah, but I'm saying like I don't know if I like saw kids picking on her. Like why I felt Keek. protective Keek. of her. Maybe you did. I mean, Keek. I don't think the teacher would have let that happen. Yeah, um, you can have tea. Well, big guy. But I think kids are season. much better, probably more accepting or understanding of odd behavior um, mm -hmm. than, than parents because parents are always protective of their children just like you're protective of Kato. Yeah. You know, yeah. it works two ways but yeah. they're a little guarded, you know, if they don't know what the situation is, you know, will he bite her? Will he slap her? Will what, you know. But yeah. <laughs> probably more so than <laughs> the other child is concerned about it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think just, you know, all you can do is be relaxed be on top of the situation, use it as a chance to educate, you know, and, um, people learn, learn from that, I think. Yeah. Cause probably more eyes are on the parent and how the parent reacts and responds. Well, than and actual an, child. in ABA, um, they talk a lot about precursor behavior. So nine times out of 10, when Cato has engaged in aggressive behaviors in the past, it's not like just completely out of the blue. It's not completely like I'm fine and giggly one minute and then I just snap and explode the next. It's there's typically subtle precursor behaviors, which, you know, I think any parent, regardless of being taught ABA methods, will recognize, you know, so Cause you know your child. Yeah. So we were, when we were at Disney, I could tell he was amped up. I could tell he was like super frustrated and just, Mm -hmm. over it and annoyed and everything else and you know some of his precursor behaviors would be like him whining um he used to do this thing to where he would like push his chin yeah he's kind of quit doing that yeah he's gotten better about it but yeah, he would do it like that. so mm -hmm. aggressively and that was kind of like i'm annoyed he, it was his go-to so things like that you start to pick up on his um you know pre meltdown behaviors and mm -hmm. you you know i don't i don't know that i just i guess i wasn't expecting him to do that that day but you know it was kind of a <laughs> lesson for me too of like you know be a little bit more on guard uh, there probably like wasn't that. anything you could have done i mean yeah he's super quick. it was hot it was crowded yeah. it was if i could have left i would have but we were literally stuck in a sea of people and they were elbow to elbow and like there was no getting out of it there was, right. there was nowhere to go. Like, yeah. We were stuck. And even though he <laughs> did it that one time, you were on top of him and it would have happened the second time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Like I immediately grabbed his hands and kind of like was bear hugging him from behind. So we were like tethered right. to each other and you know, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You can't let stuff like that stop you from living and exposing your child to right. and, all you know, sorts of environments. A little bit loud or a little bit messy or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't worry it's about like, that. like, no big deal. Like, I laugh because I think about the other <laughs> week when Wesley was here and we went to a kind of a nice restaurant. Yeah. A little bit nicer than what we typically go to. He picked yeah. it. And, um... They actually had tablecloths on the table. Yeah, and, uh, and it was a small restaurant. A small too, restaurant, like. and and <laughs> you, oh, you got it. You're, oh, good nice. singing. That is That's really good singing, KDL. <laughs> that is good singing. But um, uh, he was in good mood, and we had his little food because it was an Italian restaurant, so there wasn't anything there. Yeah, listen to him sing. I know. <laughs> mad that we had the door shut it yeah. wasn't locked though so i don't know where it stopped so all right Yay. well thanks Great. for hanging out with us and talking about how to navigate social public situations with your child autistic child if y'all have any more topics or anything like that any question and answer type things let us know and we'll see you next podcast bye